address some prominent American history myths, shall we? The Founding Fathers established America as a Christian nation. While this is a great talking point for evangelicals seeking to establish Christian dominionism with non-secular laws and politicians, it's built on a few omissions and downright lies. Glazing past the fact that the Unitarian John Adams wrote, the government of the United States is not in any sense founded on the Christian religion, Thomas Jefferson and Benjamin Franklin were deists. This meant that they believed in God, but not a biblical one that evangelicals, Calvinists, and other Protestants believed in. Many deists didn't read the Bible, pray, go to church, or do other orthodox things. Benjamin Franklin's protege, Thomas Paine, was an influential deist who didn't believe that the Almighty ever did communicate anything to man by speech, language, or vision. Franklin considered himself a deist in his 1771 autobiography, but still considered himself Christian, but not so Christian as to make America a Christian nation in any official capacity. While other founding fathers were Christian, the Constitution explicitly promotes freedom of religion and says absolutely nothing about Christianity. Ah, number two, the self-reliance myth. A favorite talking point of conservative Americans is that people in this country with means attained all their wealth through hard work, individualism, and no desire for a government handout with the intent of shaming the poor and those who need government assistance. But more often than not, wealthy Americans have earned their money by exploiting the labor of others, see slavery for tons of examples, or by benefiting from government programs. You can also think about Donald Trump and other trust fund babies who receive their wealth and influence from their parents. Consider the 1.6 million mostly white Americans who were given free tracts of land after the 19th century Homestead Acts. Even after this head start, the people in these communities shared work and resources with neighbors. Into the 20th century, farmers relied on public subsidies to remain in business. We can also consider the over 7 million mostly white Americans who benefited from 1994's GI Bill and were extended generous home, business, and education loans, propelling them into the middle class. Nearly half of the suburban homes of the 1950s were built affordably through the government regulating private loans and ensuring low-cost mortgages. Lastly, think about the fact that even during the anti-poverty initiatives of the mid-20th century, from 1965 to 1971, 75% of America's social welfare dollars were spent on non-poor Americans. During that same period, so-called experts like Charles Murray declared that the increase of welfare programs and the proliferation of poverty was proof that America Americans had lost their self-reliant spirit. Too bad self-reliance is an American myth and the fear of socialist policies killing the country is rhetoric of the ruling class. Number three, the Wild West was crazy violent. Movies and video games, shout out to Red Dead Redemption 2, may make the late 19th century frontier seem wild and crazy, but most of the biggest stories about the era were exceptional or exaggerated. When people flooded the region after 1849's Gold Rush and 1862's Homestead Act, settlers were more worried about surviving together than fighting. The Hollywood trope of vicious attacks by indigenous people was wildly exaggerated. From 1859 to 1900, the average number of murders a year per frontier town was 1.5. Shockingly, there was only about 8 true bank heists in 40 years compared to roughly 3,000 bank robberies on American soil in 2018 alone. Also, it's estimated that 1 in 4 cowboys from the 1860s to 80s were black. Alleged Salem witches were burnt at the stake. During the infamous Salem witch trials, nobody, a grand total of zero people were burned at the stake. 19 people convicted as witches were hanged and one was pressed to death, another 15 died in prison, but nobody was burnt at the stake. These numbers pale in comparison to the European witch hunts from the 15th to 18th centuries in which about 60,000 people were executed. And yes, some of them were actually burnt at the stake.